So this Linux distro has been sitting at number one on DistroWatch. Gamers are hyping it, Arch users are praising it. Yeah, but the real question is, can Cache OS actually be used as a daily driver, and is it really that good for gaming? Let's find out. So what is Cacheos? Cache OS is an Arch-based Linux distribution that focuses heavily on performance, responsiveness, and modern hardware optimization. Unlike vanilla Arch, where you build everything from scratch, Cache OS gives you a polished installer. Pre-configured performance tweaks a custom-optimized kernel, and a system that's ready to use right after installation, think of it as Arch Linux, but optimized, tuned, and ready out of the box. So why is Cache OS number one on DistroWatch? Now let's clear something up quickly. DistroWatch rankings are based on page hits, not best distro ever, but still, being number one tells us something important. People are curious about Cache OS, testing it, switching to it, and that's mostly because of its performance-focused kernel, strong reputation among gamers, and how fast and responsive it feels on modern hardware. Downloading Cache OS is straightforward. Just go to cacheos.org and click on Download. Alright, once you click download, you're going to notice something cool. Cache OS actually gives you two different versions to pick from, desktop version. This is the one 99% of people should download. It's built for your laptop, desktop, workstation, or full gaming PC. If you're using Cache OS as your daily driver, or you want that high performance gaming setup, go with desktop. Now the handheld edition is a different beast. This one is tuned specifically for devices like the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, Ioneo, and other handheld gaming PCs. It comes with gamepad optimized settings UI tweaks for small screens performance tuning for portable hardware. Unless you're installing Cache OS on a handheld gaming device, you can completely skip this version. All right, so we're not wasting any time. We're going straight into the installation process. Once you've downloaded the Cache OS ISO, creating a bootable USB is honestly the easiest part of this whole thing. Just grab Belena Etcher or Rufus, pick your ISO, pick your USB stick, hit flash, and you're done. Just plug it in and boot from it. If you try to log in and it fails, try switching to Wayland. Once you're inside the live environment, things get a lot more interesting. Cache OS uses its own graphical installer, and let me tell you, this is where it seriously separates itself from vanilla Arch. For the bootloader choice you get, Grub or Lemon. If you're new, choose Grub, always. From here, select your language, location, and keyboard layout. Where do you want to install the OS? You'll see a list of your drives if you click on Select Storage Device. For a clean install on a new drive, simply select Erase Disk. The installer will create necessary partitions automatically. You can encrypt the drive if you want by clicking the checkbox. Leave the bootloader location at the default. Then you also get to choose your file system, and I'll say this up front, choose B TRFS. One of the most impressive parts of the Cache OS installation is the sheer variety of choice. When you reach the desktop environment selection, you aren't just choosing a skin, you're choosing your entire workflow. Cache OS officially supports nearly 20 different environments. For most of you, KDE Plasma is the top recommendation. In 2026, Plasma 6 is the gold standard for high-performance Linux. It's highly flexible, supports HDR for gaming, and feels very familiar if you're coming from Windows. If you prefer a cleaner, more focused experience, GNOME is right there. It's modern, gesture-heavy, and perfect if you want your OS to just stay out of the way while you work. But if you're feeling adventurous, you have to try Cosmic. Built by System76 in Rust, it's blazingly fast and offers a perfect middle ground between the simplicity of GNOME and the power of a tiling window manager. 
For the power users who want maximum screen real estate, the installer includes pre-configured tiling options like Hyperland, Sway, and i3. These come with Cache's own dot files, meaning they look beautiful and are fully functional right out of the box without hours of manual configuration. And for those running on older hardware or just wanting a ultra-minimalist footprint for a dedicated gaming rig, you can opt for XFCE, LXQT, or even OpenBox. The best part? You can technically select multiple environments during the install if you want to test them all out, though sticking to one is usually cleaner for a daily driver. Now enter your name, then create your username and password you will use. This is a summary of what you selected and what will happen when you start the installation. Click on Install to start the install process. The installer will now copy all necessary OS files from the USB to your internal drive. Now restart your PC. You may need to remove the USB drive to prevent booting from it again. Alright, so once you're finally inside your fresh Kashi OS desktop, the very first thing you're going to notice is this little gem called the Kashi OS Hello app. And let me tell you, this thing is basically your mission control for the entire system. Right at the top, you've got all your documentation links clearly laid out. There's the README, which gives you a quick overview of how Kashi OS works, the release info so you can see what's new in the latest version, and then the wiki, which is packed with guides for things like kernel switching, BTRFS snapshots, gaming tweaks, driver setup, all the stuff you'd normally have to Google for. And if you ever get stuck or want to hang out with the community, the Hello app has direct links to the support channels, including the official forum and the project's communication hubs. So instead of wandering around different websites, everything you need is one click away. Super convenient. Now the Hello app doesn't stop at documentation. There's also a whole section showing you recommended software you can install right away. This includes package groups for development, gaming, multimedia, and system tools. It's basically curated bundles made specifically to work well with Kishi OS, so you're not sifting through thousands of packages trying to figure out what's useful. The next big area inside the Kashi OS Hello app is the Apps and Tweaks section, and this is where the real power user magic starts to happen. The Kashi OS Hello app provides a graphical interface for enabling various system tweaks and optimizations. These tweaks are typically implemented by enabling specific background services or system configurations designed to improve performance or system management. Example, the Bluetooth enabled tick box. This toggle simply enables the system's Bluetooth service, ensuring the necessary services start at boot. The Bluetooth service is enabled by default in recent installers. You can research what these others do. In the app, the Fixes section provides automated solutions for common maintenance tasks and system troubleshooting. As of 2026, these tools are designed to resolve issues without requiring manual terminal commands. For example, the System Update launches the Cache Update tool to check for and apply system-wide updates. It also checks for Arch Linux news, orphan packages, and pending kernel reboots. There is also this Install Gaming Packages. This is a shortcut to install essential gaming libraries and tools such as Steam, Wine Dependencies, and specialized Proton Cache OS builds for optimized performance. Rank Mirrors refreshes and sorts the Arch and Cache OS mirror lists by speed and reliability. This is a common fix for slow download speeds or update errors caused by outdated server links. Reset Keyrings reinitializes the Pac-Man keyring by removing old files and updating the latest Arch and Cache OS keys, which fixes corrupted package or unknown trust errors during updates. We also have Install Snapper support. 
which automatically configures Snapper for BTRFS snapshots, allowing you to roll back the system to a previous state from the bootloader if an update causes issues. The Remove Orphans scans for and uninstalls orphan packages, dependencies that were installed for a program you have since removed. Remove DB lock. This one deletes the database lock file. This resolves the unable to lock database error that occurs if a previous package management process was interrupted or crashed. I like this one change DNS. It opens a menu to switch your system's DNS provider to faster or more private options like Cloudflare or Google, bypassing provider level blocks, or slow resolution. If you're looking to turn your PC into a high-performance daily driver without the terminal headaches, you need to check out the Cache OS package installer under Applications. Think of it as your one-stop shop for setting up your applications in just a few clicks. Instead of searching for random names, the installer groups apps into logical categories like browsers, office, gaming, and multimedia. You can just check the boxes for LibreOffice, GIMP, or Discord and hit Apply. For those who find the terminal scary, this is officially recommended by the devs as a safe alternative because it handles complex dependencies in the background for you. If the package installer is your app store, the KCHEOS kernel manager is the engine bay of your system. It is one of the most powerful tools for turning KGOS into a daily driver because it lets you swap the soul of your OS without touching a single line of code. Here's why it's a game changer for your daily setup. Not every kernel works perfectly for every task. The kernel manager lets you pick from a massive list of pre-compiled options. In 2026, Linux hardware support can still be a bit wild west. If your Wi-Fi is acting up or a game is stuttering, you don't have to reinstall the OS. You just open the kernel manager, try a different flavor, and reboot. It's like having a mechanic in your app drawer. Cache OS defaults to KDE Plasma 6, providing one of the most fluid and high-tech desktop experiences on Linux. By default, Cache OS uses the Kickoff application launcher. Here is why it is elite for a daily driver. It has a modern search, just tap the Super Windows key and start typing. It doesn't just find apps, it calculates math, converts currencies, and finds files instantly via Kruner integration. We also have Octopi. It is your high-powered graphical front-end for managing software. While the package installer we talked about earlier is like a curated app store, Octopi is more like a professional database tool for everything on your system. Octopi is a graphical wrapper for Pacman, the Arch package manager. It lets you search the entire Arch and Cache OS repositories with a level of detail you won't find in a standard app store. accessing the AUR, Arch User Repository. This is the secret sauce of Arch Linux. If an app isn't in the official repos, like a specific niche driver or a beta version of a game, it's probably in the AUR. Octopi has an alien icon. Click it and you can search and install almost any Linux software in existence directly through Octopi using helpers like Yay or Peru. 
The Cache OS package installer is great for initial setup, getting your browser, Steam, etc. Octopi is for long-term maintenance. If an app breaks or you need a very specific version of a library, you use Octopi to find exactly what you need. Installing gaming apps is incredibly straightforward thanks to the automation built into Cache OS. You have two main ways to do it directly from the Hello app, the one-click gaming setup, which is recommended. This is the fastest way to turn your PC into a gaming beast. It doesn't just install one app, it sets up the entire ecosystem. Click the button labeled Install Gaming Packages. What happens next? This triggers a background script that installs the Cachio's Gaming Meta and Cachio's Gaming Applications packages. So what do you get afterwards? This single click automatically installs Steam, Lutris, Heroic Games Launcher, and essential tools like Mango HUD for FPS overlays, and Gamescope. As you can see, Steam and Lutris are now installed. Also, Cache OS makes GPU driver installation almost entirely automatic, both during the initial setup and if you swap hardware later. It is widely considered one of the easiest Arch-based distros for driver management. If you only want Steam or only Lutris without the extra tools, use the built-in installer. So here's the bottom line, Cache OS is no longer just for Linux enthusiasts, it has matured into a polished, stable, daily driver ready distro that also happens to be one of the fastest Linux systems you can run in 2026. If you're tired of Windows bloat, tired of background processes you can't control, or you simply want your hardware to actually feel fast, then Cache OS is absolutely worth installing. It's Arch without the headaches. Give it a try, and your PC might just feel brand new again. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.